Painters study old masters to improve their craft. Writers read the classics. Same is true for musicians. But as a concept artist, what can we learn from classic pieces of design? Welcome to episode five of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges for you to tackle. The first four videos in this series really gave you a taste of the concept art experience. First, we digest a brief, then we make a first draft, revise the work, and then we do it all over again. And at a high level, this loop really is the entire job. For the remainder of this series, each of these assignments are going to be a little bit different. Each one is going to introduce you to a specific job skill that's going to make this loop easier. And I'll warn you right now, today's assignment probably isn't what you're expecting. The brief is to holistically examine a household object. Because here's the thing, our drawings will be so much better if we can learn to think more broadly than just shape and color. We have to consider function and context. And when we combine all those elements, then our designs shift to being solutions instead of just pretty decoration. But it's going to take some training to see the world this way. So for the demo, let's start simply. Picking a household object, I'm going to use my iPhone charging cable. At a basic level, it serves one function. It plugs my phone into the wall with this cable. And so to do this assignment, I could write that down, or if you want to, you can make a sketch and take notes on that sketch, however you want to do it. We're just investigating. Okay, so let's go a little deeper. In what specific scenarios am I going to be charging my phone? And I can envision two categories here. While it's operating and while it's passive. So when it's passive, all I need to do is get my phone within about three feet of an outlet. Put the phone near the outlet, plug it in, it charges by itself. No problem. When it's active, the design requirements get a bit trickier. Because a thing I find myself doing is wanting to listen to a new podcast, and then I pick up my phone and I see there's like 1% of the battery left. So this means that I need to go find a chair in my house that's within three feet of an outlet, and then I kind of you know cram myself into the chair and hope that it reaches. If I'm especially desperate, sometimes I'll use my headphones as a bit of a wire extender. Because if you plug the headphones in, they're like two feet long, so now I have maybe five feet from an outlet. But still, I'm limited by the cord length. So the feature I just discovered there is cord length. But the way I got there was by thinking about the scenario. I think scenarios are always a really great place to start. When in doubt, start by thinking about what the end user actually does with an object. This always leads to useful details. One detail is that the charging wire can be detached. When you separate the charging brick, or whatever this thing is called, it reveals that there's actually a USB connector on this end. So now I have three functional choices here. I can charge my phone with a laptop or a portable charger, so I don't need to have the wall involved. It also allows me to swap out the cord for a longer replacement cord, or I guess theoretically a shorter one. And if I lose the charging brick, I can swap it from another device. Maybe I have another Apple product lying around and they're interchangeable. But let's focus on cord length for a minute. One of my portable hard drives has, I guess, about a nine inch connector cable. I don't think I've ever seen a cord quite so short. So the iPhone cord is about three feet long. We can think of that as a middle ground. And then my vacuum cleaner has a cord that's, I think it's maybe 25 feet long. It's really long. And each of these scenarios have chosen a cord length that's based on what we could describe as an average use case. For a hard drive, a short cable is fine because you never really need it to travel very far from the device that's plugged into. On a vacuum cleaner, a long cord is fine because it's specifically designed to coil neatly around the handle when it's not in use. Now the iPhone cord is different. I've already laid out a couple scenarios on where you'll be charging your phone, but there are way more average use cases for a phone. And because there's so many ways we use our phone, that makes it harder to pick an average cord length. So Apple did their best, and they picked something that's about three feet long. But unlike my vacuum cleaner, they didn't create any official way to coil up the wire when it's not in use, which means I paid extra for this beautiful phone and a matching beautiful white wire that just immediately turns into this ugly knot in the drawer with my other miscellaneous wires. And actually, that's not even fully true. I went out and bought a 50 cent ugly little Velcro cable tie, which allows me to coil the white wire a little more easily when it's not in use. 
So I've paid extra for a beautiful thing, proceeded to make that thing ugly, just so it would be useful for me. And this choice here is a perfect example of one element of holistic design. Because all design is a balancing act. Designers sat in a room, they thought about this charging cable, and they asked, what's most important? Do we go for a clean, minimal look? Or maybe do we care more about avoiding tangles? And do we think about some tangle-resistant storage? And it appears to me that what Apple chose is aesthetics. All the accessories look good together. They uphold the Apple brand imagery. And that's great. Apple sells a lot of products because they have beautiful design work. Well, let's go to the other end of the cable. There's yet another balancing act. This connector, the one that plugs into the phone itself, is called a lightning connector. And honestly, it's great. It is symmetrical. And what that means is that I plug this connector in the correct orientation every time. The downfall, though, is that this is not a standard connection outside the world of Apple products. Of all the other gadgets in my home, I think most of them have a micro USB connector. So what that means is if the iPhone were to use a micro USB, I wouldn't need so many wires in my house. Now I'll pause here. And even if I were to limit my examination of, to these three elements, there's been a lot to talk about. And this is just a phone charger. What if you were to be studying a rice cooker, a Nintendo Switch, or even a fighter jet? Objects aren't just shapes. They're things we live with every day, and they represent a combination of priorities balanced against each other. So for your homework, I challenge you to pick an everyday object in your house that you think you know in and out, and then take it through the same investigation. Draw a sketch, write notes, whatever you want to do, but think about the various aspects of design and what their pros and cons are. Think about how you use the object and how that relates to the choices of the form, shape, and color. Seeing design holistically like this really is the gateway to creating your own engaging concept art. So have fun with it, and when you're finished, I'll see you in the next lesson.